All right, I'm in Western Kansas today. This is my first hunt of the year in Kansas. It's November 1st, super excited. It's November. It's gonna be warm this week. It's supposed to be in the high 70s most of the week. Today's pretty much the coldest day and it's about 59 right now. But I just got to this spot I'm on public land and uh, I look down at the draw and there's a little buck down there in the shade walking around. So it's a good sign already. I thought there'd be some deer bedded down here just off of a picked cornfield. Um, I have some good intel about this cornfield. My buddy was here about six days ago and the corn was still standing and it's picked now. So it must have been probably within the last four or five days, I guess. Um, so that's probably a really good food source for them. And this draw is just maybe 50 yards off that field edge. So I figured there'd be some deer down here bedded. And uh, so far there's at least one. The first evening produces a lot of action, including multiple nice bucks, none of which are quite what I'm looking for. Well, it's the morning of day two. I haven't seen a whole lot of deer this morning. I did see a few different bucks. One of them is for sure one that I saw last night. He looks mature, but his antlers just aren't very big. He's busted off. He's got like two points on the one side because he's broken up, but um, kind of a heavier deer. Um, and then I saw another one that was pretty tall, but it was so dark out. I couldn't tell exactly how big he was and he went down in the canyon. Um, pretty early kind of chasing a doe so I never got another look at him I haven't seen him since but he's not too far away probably quarter mile maybe so I think I've only seen about six or seven deer this morning I saw 35 36 something like that last night in the same spot but they're definitely around somewhere I haven't seen any for sure shooters yet but it's still early the sun's just coming up it's uh, probably about an hour and a half into daylight now about two o'clock right now. I've been sneaking through these draws all day. I had four does and one young buck walk up on me about 30 yards away. And then I uh, saw that one buck that was sleeping there. He was awake and his head was up when I first saw him. And then I watched him for about 15 minutes and he kind of put his head down and fell asleep it looked like. But other than that, um, I just spooked up a pretty nice buck. I've never seen him before. He's probably about the same size if not a little bit bigger than the biggest one I saw last night so not a bad deer I didn't get any footage of him but he went over this cornfield and into this draw um, over here where I'm at now and I'm trying to find him again but it's just so tough to find him bedded it's almost impossible unless you know exactly where certain beds are but I've never been back here so I don't that's going to do it for day two. I really didn't see much until right about sunset and some does and two small bucks popped out onto the cornfield and uh, after that I just grabbed my spotting scope and kind of looked all around 360 all the way around me and spotted a lot of does. I bet I saw 35, 40 does probably total. Most of them were two miles away though and uh, I did see what looks to be probably the first shooter buck I've seen. He was with some does yeah, I'd say probably about two miles away um, on private. So I think he might have been bedded on public and then went on to the private to feed. 
I'll have to look at my maps for sure. He looked pretty nice from two miles away anyway. I'm not sure how big he is exactly, but I think he's the biggest one I've seen so far. Well, it's been a pretty good morning so far. I've seen 18 does and nine bucks. I haven't seen the big one yet this morning. I'm over here right where I saw him come out of last night. I was hoping he'd come in here and bed this morning, but either he got in here well before daylight and bedded down or he's just not in here, but they travel a lot. So you never know where he could be. He could be five miles from here by now. I came over to this new spot last night. I just camped in my truck over here last night. It's about 30 minutes or so from where I was yesterday in the past few days. I just wasn't seeing any shooter bucks over there. I did see that one possible shooter, but I could never find him again, so I decided to come over here. This is a spot I've always wanted to check out. I've seen it on the map for a couple years, and um, it's always excited me. So I came over here and uh, walked in about a mile or so this morning in the dark got up here on my glassing hill that I found on the map and kind of can look over this whole bottom and then up in the hills behind um, this public ground up into the private too. And I really didn't see a lot this morning. I think I've seen 27 deer total. And I can see like four miles on each side. So really not a lot of deer for as much country as I can see, but I did see a, most likely a shooter buck. Um, he's on private ground a couple miles away. I think he's about two miles from here. And I saw him, a couple other smaller bucks, and then some does go down into a ravine and a ditch. And I never saw him again. I'm guessing they're gonna bed down there somewhere. There's some trees down there, so I don't know if there's shade from the trees or if there's some cuts for shade. Um, it's gonna be probably in the 80s again today, so they're gonna need shade for sure. But Right now, um, I'm gonna pack up, get back to the truck, drive around the, I think the landowner actually lives on the property. So I'm gonna go knock on his door and talk to him and see if I can get permission to go hunt for at least today, maybe the whole week. Um, see if I can go after that buck. I'm pretty sure he's on that same property. If not, he's really close and there's corn and uh, wheat field there. So they're probably gonna come up to those to feed again tonight like they most likely did last night. It's pretty exciting though. Um, couldn't tell exactly how big he was, but his frame looked really nice. He's probably ear width and uh, I bet his main beams are pretty long too. They, they reached out for pretty far, almost to the tip of his nose, I think. So he's a pretty nice buck. Um, by far the biggest one I've seen this trip, so it's uh, got me excited for sure. Let's go see if we can get permission. Just got permission to hunt this property today and tomorrow. I'm super pumped. I got over here and I can see this wheat field that the deer were on and they went down to the east and there's some draws and stuff down there and some trees exactly like I thought. And uh, it looks like on the map there's some cuts just right down off the field not too far that they could be bedding in. So I'm going to be super, super careful. This property isn't very big and I definitely don't want to spook them off. So I'm just going to be really, really careful. And if I think I can't see them or I think I'm going to spook them, I'll just wait it out till dark and they might come up to the top to feed again in the evening. And maybe I can get my heads up decoy out and uh, make a play on them in the field. But 
that's exciting. I'm pretty pumped. I've got a shooter probably within half a mile of me right now, so I'm excited. I was sneaking up with my decoy and just looking at all these shaded places, and then a buck stood up in the middle of this weed patch. I didn't know the weeds were near that tall, but I couldn't see him, and then another little buck stood up out of him, and they kind of trotted off. They could see the decoy, but I don't know. They didn't really like it or something, and they kind of left, but I just saw the two, so I don't know if the rest of them are up further. It looks like there's this straw that comes up, and there's some more weeds in it that are pretty tall. There are nine deer that I saw come in here, so the other ones might be close. I'm probably just gonna sit tight and maybe they'll stand up out of their beds and I can see them. Well, I came up here on this hill so I could glass down in the trees below me and I didn't see anything for quite a while. I sat here for probably two hours, didn't see anything. I was about to leave and I just looked one more time and I saw some does down here feeding a little bit. They got up, moved around a little bit and then bedded back down. There's four of them down there that I see. I'm guessing the buck, the big buck's probably down there with them. I think pretty much all the deer I saw this morning are down there. I just got set up for the evening. There's some really good trails going through these draws. I'm sure they took them this morning. So I'm hoping they take the same trails back up to the wheat field this evening to feed. I haven't seen anything yet. It's starting to get dark soon. I think I'm gonna get closer. They might have worked up a different draw to another field across the road. Or maybe they're just still bedded there. I don't know why they would be bedded so late. Usually they get up and feed about 30 to 45 minutes before dark. I got close tonight, very close, about 80 yards from that big buck. I snuck over the hillside and there were two little tiny bucks, little tiny spikes, uh, about probably 100, 120 yards away and they started walking toward me. They got up to about 50 yards and then uh, some more deer started popping out of the trees and out of the hills. I think there, some of them were bedded underneath some cedar trees and the big buck was bedded quite a ways back in the timber. He didn't show up till almost last light. I had uh, one little tiny buck come close to me he came right into the decoy about 20 yards away he was there for probably five minutes and then the bigger buck was back with a doe in the trees forever and finally right at last light a doe the doe came out into the pasture uh, right in my direction and the buck started following her so I slipped up close with the decoy and they just kind of stared at me um, I was silhouetted so they could see the, the antler on the decoy. I have just one antler on the decoy so they could tell it was just a buck or something. And I was hoping the the big buck would get kind of territorial and kind of chase me off. He already chased a smaller buck off this evening. I saw that. But I got to about 80 yards and they just both kind of looked at me. It was last, last light. Like I probably could have shot about 30 yards, but anything further just would have been too dark. Um, it was still legal, but just kind of dark for a further shot. And uh, right at 80 yards away, the, the doe smelled me and they kind of took off. They didn't get real spooked or anything. I don't think they ran too far, but didn't get it done today. Um, but I got pretty close to a big shooter buck. I don't know how big he is. He was in the timber, like I said, forever. And then it was kind of dark when he was coming out. So I couldn't exactly get a good look, but he's definitely a shooter for sure. Um, by far the biggest buck I've seen on this trip. So. That's gonna be it for tonight, day four. Saw quite a few deer, got permission on a private spot, so that's always awesome, and uh, got close to a shooter. So, we'll see you tomorrow.
think that's going to be it for this morning at this spot. I bet everything's bedded down by now. I had a buck chase a doe right in front of me. The doe was probably about 30 yards. The buck was probably 45. Um, I saw that buck last night. He's two or three year old deer. Nothing too big, but he'll be nice in a couple of years. I also had a fawn right above me about 15, 20 yards, but no big buck this morning so far. He could be anywhere right now. All right, I just left the other spot and I was going down the road to the new spot I was gonna head to. And on the public ground, like 60 yards off the road, there's two bedded bucks. I saw two for sure. I don't think either of those are shooters, but I'm gonna just sneak down here and see if there's any bigger bucks. They're just right by the road. It's crazy, I can't believe they're so close, but uh, I can get on them pretty fast and the wind's pretty good. Well, I got to 65 yards of those two deer. It was just the two of them there, and, and they were right by the road, 65 yards off the road, basically. I was just a couple yards off the road and just standing there looking at them. I looked at them for probably 10 minutes, took some pictures and got some good video and gave them the pass. It just wasn't quite what I'm looking for. He's a really beautiful deer, nice three point, but just not what I'm looking to shoot. So uh, I'm gonna keep going and Got about two hours of light left. Go find some some place to hunt tonight and uh, either sit up on a hill or maybe I'll go down to some fields and just sit on the edge of the field. But cool experience nonetheless. I just got set up for this morning's hunt. It's gonna be tough. Uh, not in the spot I wanted to. There's no cover where I really wanted to be. So I'm back a little bit further. I don't know, it's not, not what I was hoping for this morning, but I'm close to the bedding area. I'm still on the trails, so we'll see what happens. I've got the decoy out in front of me. I only have permission on this property for this week. Today's Friday, so I'm gonna just give it a go and hopefully the big buck comes in here this morning. I just spotted this big buck with a doe and another buck up on the hill. They're upwind of me, so my wind's good. But I can't really sneak any closer right now because they'd see me. He's nice, he's nice. It's the first good look at it I've got of him. I think it's the same buck I've been seeing. He's still up there. He's up in the hill, I can't see the doe anymore, but I think the two bucks are right up in the hill. If they stay where they're at, they'll be in a really good position. I should be able to pop over and have like a 20 yard shot, but I've got to move. As I sneak over the hill, the big buck jumps out of his bed to examine my decoy. Seconds later, he turns broadside, offering me a perfect shot. I just missed him shot was like, I thought it was like 30, 32 yards. I just guessed. It was probably closer to 40. My area was going a little bit low. And then I think I smoked a yucca plant and missed low. I got up to like 28 to 30 yards probably in his bed. And he looked over, saw the decoy, jumped up, ran off about 10 yards. Like the decoy kind of spooked him because I, I guess he didn't know I was there. And then he started coming back and he kind of worked toward me. The doe got up, kind of got nervous, kind of looked at my decoy. I had the decoy and my bow and uh, he kind of angled away. Came a little bit closer, then went a little bit further and he was quartering to me so hard most of the time. 
Then he finally turned broadside. I got up to my knees to try to get above the yucca plants and I thought he would go above them, but I don't know if he was further than I thought, but I know I for sure hit that yucca plant and missed him. That's the opportunity I've been waiting for all week. Everything worked out perfect except for the shot. I took my time, I just, I don't know. Just the way it is sometimes, I guess. <sighs> I can't believe it, but I'm sitting here where I originally did this morning. I was just thinking through my options, kind of thinking of what, what I wanted to do, if I could slip around and maybe this buck was back in the bedding area, the one that I missed. And uh, I look up and there's a big buck with a doe right down here, like 115 yards, 120 yards probably, in the bedding area. And I thought it was the same buck that I missed, but it's not, it's a different deer. It's a bigger one. I think this is the one that I actually saw the other day. Oh, I just need to play it safe and be smart. As I think about my options for a stalk, the buck suddenly leaves the cover and follows his doe into the pasture. After watching the younger buck challenge the big buck in competition for his doe, all three deer walk over the hill out of sight. Once I know the deer are over the hill for good, I grab my bow and make a move. I just snuck around. I checked this one draw behind me, snuck through it really, really quietly. They weren't in there, but I just popped up over. I was gonna go to the next draw and look, and I saw the smaller buck. He's two draws over. He's just kind of standing there. I don't think he saw me. The other two have to be close. I just cleared the second draw. They're not in here. They've gotta be in that third and last draw. After two hours of waiting, the buck finally stands up from his bed. He's quartering away too hard for a clean shot, then quickly beds back down. Over the next three hours, the wind picks up. It's now strong enough that a 45 yard shot would be considered unethical in my opinion. So I make a move, belly crawling to the next yucca plant, staying hidden behind it as good as I can in the short grass. Now only 30 yards away, I continue to wait, hoping he will stand up and present a clear shot without detecting my presence. One hour later, the big buck and doe begin to feed in the draw below me. This is the moment I've been waiting for. The doe begins to feed further away and the buck follows. Just as they are about to leave, the buck turns broadside at 37 yards.
The shot felt good, but the arrow did not strike where I intended. Six hour stock. <sighs> Been sitting behind a yucca plant for six hours trying to get a shot. And <sighs> they finally worked up. They were feeding. He was with his doe. And 38 yards, they saw me, they were looking at me. But I just slowly pulled and let it rip and I was shaking uncontrollably and I just smoked the shoulder like smoked the scapula. I watched him run over this hill. There's some trees down here so I'm gonna pop up over the hill and see if I can see where he beds down. I'm guessing and, and hoping he's gonna bed down soon. There was a lot of blood coming out and it looked like I got through into the lungs. Or at least one lung but I don't know. I see the doe out here in the pasture. She went over the top onto the next property. I think there's a wheat field over there. And I don't see the buck anywhere. There's a lot of trees down here and he could have bedded in all these trees. There's cedar trees and some cottonwoods. I'm gonna go back to the fence and see if I can find any blood. I don't wanna push him, but I think he's gonna need another arrow to pass away quickly. Well, I walked around and looked the entire property over. I saw that doe jump the fence onto the neighbors about three quarters of a mile from where I shot the buck. And I don't know if the buck went over that hill first. I know the buck was in front of the doe. So maybe he went through there and the doe could smell where he walked and just followed the same path. I don't know. There's cedars down there and some cottonwoods, some logs, and I looked under every single tree. I looked by every log underneath every yucca plant and every tiny little nook and cranny and crevice of the, the sand and rock cutouts and everything that I could find. And I didn't see any blood, any arrow, or the deer. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know what to say. I waited all year for that shot. That buck is literally a dream buck. He's exactly like exactly what I came to Kansas for. Exactly what I wanted, exactly what I had in my mind. Big, wide buck, old, mature. He had a humongous body. I mean, huge. And I had a shot. It was about 37 yards. And I guess, I don't know, it was a six hour stock. I guess just the adrenaline and mainly my legs were falling asleep and my arms were tired and everything was just tired and sore. I haven't eaten or drank anything all day because I've been on the stock and I'm just worn out. And I don't know what happened with the shot. I think I, think I was just shaking so bad um, that it just didn't go where I wanted it. That's a heartbreaker. That's a giant deer, humongous. I was within 45 yards of him for six hours. Just patiently waiting until I was gonna get a good, clean, broadside shot. And I got it, and I messed it up. Sometimes those things just happen in bow hunting. For the first hour of light the next morning, I glass all the country I can see from the highest hill around, and with no sign of the buck anywhere, I begin the body search. Nine miles later, I finally find what I'm looking for. All right guys, I can hardly believe it. But after about four and a half hours of looking for this deer, I was just about done. There was just one group of trees here and some cedar tree rows to look through and then that's all the ground I had permission to look on. And I bumped him up. He's alive, he's doing fine. But he ran off like he wasn't hurt at all. And he ran into another group of trees, grow of cedars, and he stopped there. It's kind of the last cover for a way, so I think he's probably gonna stay there and bed down. There's some smaller bucks and a lot of does. I saw at least 10 or 12 different deer in there this morning from the top of the hill. So it's gonna be tough with all the eyes, but I came back to my pack 
to grab my decoy and my water. It's pretty windy again today, but I think I'm just going to sneak in with my decoy. It's kind of my only option. It's really tough to shoot in the wind with that on my bow, but I think they're going to spook out if if they see me again. So, oh, I'm so relieved though. I am so grateful he's still alive and doing fine. I was worried he might have just ran onto another property I can't look and died last night or something and never would have found him but I'm so glad he's still alive and he looks like he's doing fine so even if I don't get him today I'm sure he'll live and he'll be fine but hopefully hopefully I can get him this is my last day I have permission on this spot it's about 11 o'clock in the morning right now so I don't have much time but I can get one one more good stock in for sure hopefully it goes well I looped around on the other side of these cedars behind me. I'm about 130 yards from the last place I saw the deer. There's probably 12 or 13 in there, so it's gonna be really tough to get close, but it's windy, it's blowing about 20 miles an hour. I'm gonna bring my decoy with me, and there's a lot of yucca plants, so I'm just gonna belly crawl the whole way until I see them or until I figure out what I need to do to get close. Well, that's gonna do it for today, day seven in Kansas. The evening has come to a close and I never ended up finding that buck again. I snuck around that tree row where I saw him go and uh, I saw three does in there. They're about 20 to 30 yards and never ended up seeing that buck. I bet he was back in the trees about 50, 60 yards in the shade and I just never could see him. And the does ended up kind of getting nervous and they decided to leave and they ran out the back side of the tree row and I never saw where they went. I never saw where the big buck went, but I snuck around and looked at some other areas and ended up finding the deer again. I saw 26 deer down in uh, Creek Bottom where I've been seeing them bed before but that big buck wasn't with them. There were a couple smaller bucks and some nice younger up and comer bucks, but the big one wasn't with them. So I don't know where he went. I ended up walking five more miles after that, trying to find him and uh, could just couldn't turn him up. So I'm not sure where he went. He's a big, old, mature, sneaky deer and he's he knows his way around, I'm sure. So he's probably just hiding out in some little cut or some little ditch somewhere where he knows he's safe. and. Um, probably just lay low till dark came and I just never ended up seeing him but today is the last day I have permission to hunt this private spot and uh, it was going to be the last day of my hunt anyway so I guess it just works out. I'm very confident that that deer is going to be fine. I bumped him out of a tree row, watched him run 100 yards and he, he ran like nothing ever happened so he's a big old tough mature deer and I didn't get much penetration at all I thought originally I got about three inches but I think it's more like about an inch and a half two inches pr pretty much just the broadhead and that's about it and uh, like I said he looked totally fine it was about 21 hours after the hit when I saw him today and uh, that's quite a bit of time. If he was gonna expire from a, a lung hit, I think he would have already. So it's so challenging and so incredibly tough. It uh, seems impossible sometimes, but I know it's not. And uh, I know if I stick with it and just keep after it, it's gonna happen eventually. And I'm confident that deer's gonna be fine, so I'll still have my tag. And that's a wrap for this trip, but I will be back in Kansas in 2020, and hopefully I'll end up with a buck next time. I'm headed back to Kansas. It's been nine days since I shot that mule deer and I saw him the next day. I think he's still alive. I got permission to hunt that property again, which I'm pretty surprised about, but I'm super thankful for and really excited to get out there. Um, just leaving Nebraska now. I should roll in about probably 1.30 in the morning there get a few hours of sleep and then go hunting right away tomorrow morning. I'm I'm really excited. Um, both of those bucks, the one I missed and the one that I ended up hitting in the shoulder were on this property and there were a lot of does and smaller bucks too. So I'm really excited the rut should be ramping up and there might be some new bucks moving in, but hopefully I can find that big one again and uh, get redemption and make a better shot this time. So I'm excited for this hunt.
So far I've seen 10 does and one 3x3 buck. There's four does bedded probably about 70 yards away from me right now. And then the rest of the does went up into the tree row. It's pretty calm this morning, but if the wind picks up a little bit, I'm going to try to back up and sneak around the back side of this tree that I'm sitting behind and slip around and try to see if I can see any more deer in that tree row. I'm sure there's a lot more. There's actually another deer coming over the hill right now. That big buck, if he's around here, he could be up in that tree row or who knows, he could be five miles away. I don't know. All right, I can't believe it. I said that deer's coming over the hill. That's him, it's him. He's, he's limping a little bit, but it's him. He's alive. He's, there's two other bucks over there. Yes, yes, I'm so pumped. As I sneak closer in hopes of watching the buck bed, a young buck chases a doe toward my direction. Seconds later, I notice another doe only 40 yards away, and just behind her, I catch a glimpse of antler tines. I know exactly what buck it is, and my heart begins to pound. The big buck pushes a doe past me and down into the creek bottom below. Now 130 yards away, the big buck chases a smaller buck off and continues to follow his doe. Three does make their way past me, first at 70, then at 60 yards. The buck follows right behind them. As he steps out from behind a tree, the moment I've been dreaming of becomes reality. verge of tears right now. I didn't see him fall, but I absolutely smoked him 60 yards, drilled him. Double lung, double lung, for sure. I 
think he might have gone down. I don't see him over there. That's it. I I'm going to see if I can see him. Let's see if he fell down. I don't know. I didn't see him or hear him, but I drilled him. I mean, smoked him. Oh, yes. Unbelievable. can't see him but I mean I smoked him he's got to be dead right there I'm gonna go take a look I cannot believe it you guys I mean ever since ever since I shot that deer in the shoulder 10 days ago he has been on my mind 24 7 and it's just I just can't believe it I don't know how many prayers I've sent up that I could get another shot at that deer. And, uh, hunted at home, hunted whitetails, filmed my sister-in-law and my brother for a week. And then I was thinking, I'm like, I gotta get back to Kansas. I gotta do it. I still have my tag. So I called this landowner up. I think it was Saturday, two days ago. Called him up. I didn't think there's any way I'd get permission because I asked for for three days last time I was here, and they were didn't really uh, weren't really super pumped about it. Um, as far as I don't think they let really anybody hunt here ever, but um, they said he was fine for those three days. And uh, I really didn't think my odds were good to get permission again for another week. But I thought, you know, I'm just gonna call them up and ask, and they were totally fine with it said go right ahead and I was instantly absolutely excited knowing that I might get a shot at this buck and it just happened and it just happened <sighs> here's what happened so I'm sneaking up you can see there's an old shed behind me and uh, I was sitting right over by uh, one of these big cottonwoods behind me this morning and I said I saw this big buck and the other big buck going in this tree row. So I'm slipping up along this fence line and uh, I'm gonna go try to get eyes on where they're at, see if I can see them bed down. And I see a doe pop over the hill about 70, 80 yards away and a little buck follower. So I just kind of get down and just kind of watch him. And then I see another doe pop up 40 yards away. And I'm like, oh, huh, I wonder if there's another buck behind her. And I see antler tines at like 50 yards and I know it's him he's 50 yards away the doe sees me kind of runs off a little bit the big buck chases that doe right around about 130 yards and then make a little loop and then the doe start coming past me and they come past at 70 I have my sight at 70 then they start coming closer and closer and the doe that he's on comes past at 60 so I put my my sight at 60 and he steps out at 60, faces me for a little bit, and then he turns broadside, I draw back, settle it right where I want it, slowly pull back, and boom, drill him, drill him at 60 yards. Yes! yes! That is what hunting is all about. I mean, I have been in the lowest of lowest of lows over this deer hitting him in the shoulder. I mean, perfect of perfect stocks you could ever dream of. 37 yards, six hours in bow range. And uh, I didn't know what happened at first. And I, I didn't say this earlier in the video because I didn't know what happened, but I figured it out. Usually my 40 yard pin has always been a red for the first eight years of bow hunting. Um, it's always been a red pin. So I've had all green pins except my 40 was a red pin. 
now on this new site, I have my 30 and my 50 R red pins. And uh, I've had it a couple years, but I'm still not totally used to it. I'm still used to the, the red being 40. But I settled the 50 on the bottom of his chest 10 days ago instead of my 40 because I thought he was, you know, a red pin. My brain said it's 40, so I settled it on the bottom of his chest for 37 yards, but it was my 50 pin and totally smoked him in the shoulder. So, totally my fault. And I just, I mean, I was, I just couldn't believe I let a perfect opportunity on a giant deer like that go and totally blew it. And I was just, I was just not happy with myself, to be honest. And I knew I needed to be a better bow hunter than that. And I knew I needed a, make it happen next time and he's got to be dead over there there's a doe over there kind of looking and he's got to be dead i mean i totally smoked him i totally smoked him let's go take a look i am so excited yes that's what bow hunting is all about overcoming challenges and uh just pushing through never giving up i knew if i just stuck with it and kept after it i could fill my kansas tag and i filled it on the same deer on the same deer, you guys. <sighs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. One of the biggest deer of my life, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure he is big, though. And I can't believe it. Yes! Just walking up now. I don't see any fell in some weeds. Some tall weeds. He's got to be done right there, though. I see his rack. I see his rack. He's laying there. Yep, he's done. Yes! All right. Biggest mule deer. Let's take a look. He only made it like 70 yards and piled up. There he is. He's done. I want to show you guys. Oh my goodness, I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. There's where I hit 10 days ago. Right there in the shoulder. This is my arrow popping out from today. Man, he's lost quite a bit of body weight actually. Oh, what a deer. What a deer. Oh my goodness, guys. I can't believe it. Oh. Wow. That's incredible. I am in total disbelief of what happened this morning. This buck has been on my mind nonstop. My biggest goal as a bow hunter is to make a clean shot and a quick kill. And 10 days ago, I did not do that. I made a poor shot and thankfully this deer survived and I was extremely happy to see him survive and it has been my goal ever since that shot 10 days ago that I get back out here to western Kansas and complete my mission for a big wide Kansas mule deer and I, I truly can't believe what happened this morning I mean it was just it was just incredible I've been bow hunting for 11 years now and this experience has to be one, one of the best learning experiences of my hunting career and one of the best experiences overall. After I shot this buck 10 days ago, I was, I was pretty, pretty sick to my stomach to be honest and I just, I just didn't know if I, if I had what it took to get it done. Um, I thought I completed a perfect stock and I failed on one aspect and that was the shot, one of the most important parts of hunting. And thankfully, I got the opportunity to come back out here this week. I had the whole week to do it. Today's Monday morning and I was just gonna go after this one deer and try to get him. He's been on my mind, like I said, and, and uh, he was my number one target by far and the buck that I dreamed of shooting this year in Kansas. And, Thankfully, the Lord blessed me with an awesome morning today. It's middle of November, the rut is going. I've seen multiple bucks chasing does this morning, including this one. And thankfully, he chased a doe 
right into my shooting lane and it's it's really a dream come true in november that's exactly what you dream of happening what you want to happen is a big old buck like this to just walk right into your shooting lane broadside 60 yards and thankfully this time i made a perfect shot it was it was amazing just to just to see that arrow go right where it needed to be after all the struggles and trials and tribulations on this buck and all the experience that is, I've had chasing deer here in Kansas. I passed a really nice white tail a few days ago on public land, but I knew he just wasn't the, the deer I wanted to shoot. I was still, still had this mule deer in my mind and I still knew I could get back out here and go after these amazing creatures out west. So I passed that white tail and I knew I could maybe have a shot at getting a deer even close to this and I really I really am speechless to to have an opportunity to harvest this exact buck that I hit 10 days ago and it's it's truly a testament to how tough deer are you can see where my arrow hit 10 days ago and it hit right on the bottom of the scapula right on the joint there so a really tough part I think if I would have hit about an inch further back on that shot I would have killed him that day but that's just not what happened and I'm super thankful that he lived and survived and stayed on the same property and I'm really thankful for the landowners for giving me permission to hunt this spot it's it's truly a special spot my biggest mule deer by far um, probably one of my biggest deer ever and uh, it's a, a deer I've been dreaming of for years big wide mule deer he's got 14 scorable points for sure it's just it's just a dream buck I mean just incredible I just, I'm still in disbelief that I got him I really am it's it's just one of those incredible days in bow hunting that we all dream of and if you stick at it long enough and you try hard enough it might just happen for you I rolled in about two o'clock this morning took about a three hour nap in the back seat of my truck got out here about an hour before daylight and just sat and waited for the deer to start coming into this bedding area and it just happened to work out perfect. Just perfect. Wow. Bow hunting has taken me through some of the most incredible experiences of my life. I'm thankful for a second chance on this amazing animal and for all the lessons learned along the way.